a yet unknown entity has appeared on Earth. Human beings freaked out and strange events happen. They call 911 for help. Some spread freely in the street and much more. It all starts during an academic test. The professor collects and puts all the phones in a small cabinet. The phones start vibrating during the test, but the group ignores this. Soon after, they hear police sirens and see some kids running away. The teacher receives a phone call from a family member. It sounds like something critical because the worried teacher leaves the classroom. The class president takes his place, but they cannot sit still for long. The phones vibrate again, and suddenly, the school principal announces the lockdown. He tells the kids to stay inside the classrooms without revealing other details. The pupils find a radio in the classroom, and a girl named Ash turns it on. Unfortunately, they only hear a man talking as he approaches an entity we don't yet know anything about. In short, nothing useful. They turn off the radio and punch a hole in the locker to get their phones. Then, a very odd thing happens. A frightening voice, coupled with the free font on a dark background, is called Ash. Then suddenly, birds fly into the window and die. Although frightened, the children leave the classroom to check what is happening. They walk into the hallway as the lights flash. At one point, they find something covering the exit from the Institute. Ash surmises that this thing could take them to another dimension or universe. The others think she's crazy and turn away to look for another exit. Ash starts to approach the portal-like entity, but then a girl stops it. After that, Ash looks at her for a few moments and then kisses her. Suddenly, Jake arrives and pushes Ash. The portal tells her to push him back. Jake and Ash start fighting and the girl falls to the ground. Jake tries to help her to get up, but Ash pushes him with her leg and he disappears after touching the portal. Ash feels guilty and approaches the portal, after which she disappears just like Jake. The girl is left alone, looks around, and then disappears. In the next scene, we see parts of the world after the portals appeared. In just two weeks, a number of portals appeared around the world. Millions of people have disappeared into the portals, while some have returned. Once they come back, however, they are not the same. All countries compete with each other and don't share the information they acquire. To study the portals, scientists started the Knockers program. These people enter the portals voluntarily, then return and report what they've seen. Next, we meet the first two volunteers, Becky and Vince. They walk through a forest to reach the portal. They are told to exit the portal within 12 minutes to avoid going out of their minds. Also, nothing dead or alive must exit the portal except them. After putting on their protective suits, the three Knockers enter a house where a portal has appeared. As soon as they enter, they realize that the portal draws things towards them. After setting the timer, the group touches the portal and is taken to another house. It looks like the same one, but more spacious. They find three different doors, and Becky suggests they split up to gather more information. On the other hand, Vince is afraid because he has no gun. One of the knockers arrives in a pink-colored hallway. At one point, he hears a girl crying. He walks on the floor full of leaves and reaches the sound. The knocker finds the girl on the bed and begins to describe her. Suddenly, the girl stops crying and stares at him. The knocker gets confused. The room is full of roses everywhere. In fact, shortly afterward, we learn that the girl's name is Rose. The knocker looks around and finds pills. The voice from the portal tells him to help her when the girl starts having a seizure. The man apologizes to her and the girl returns to normal. She tells him that she misses him. We learn that this is his deceased ex-girlfriend. The knocker tries to leave the room, but the voice stops him. The girl should not take those pills, and the man scolds her. But suddenly, rose petals begin to fill his suit, eventually suffocating him. After that, the girl goes back to her original position. At that moment, Becky reaches the kitchen. The color white dominates, and objects are placed in bizarre positions. A rocking cradle appears in the middle of the room. When she approaches, Becky finds the cradle empty. As she describes what she sees, a hooded man enters the kitchen. He asks her how she feels and if she's ready to see their doctor. As the man approaches her, we see he has no face. As he continues to approach, the portal voice lets us know that Becky is pregnant. The woman pulls out her gun, but the individual keeps walking, so Becky enters another portal. She appears in a more colorful kitchen and finds Vince in front of her. Becky gets agitated 
and tries to convince herself that she's in the portal. On the other hand, Vince tells her that it's been three years since the appearance of the portals. At that moment, the portal reveals that she will have a daughter. Becky feels pains in her belly and Vince tries to calm her down. He continues to tell her that they have decided together to have this life. But then, Becky hears a voice telling her that she still has three minutes to leave the portal. She takes the gun, which in this parallel dimension is a toy, and shoots Vince. Meanwhile, Vince has already entered the third room. He reaches an 80s-style room. He reports finding three trophies, a clock showing three o'clock, and a marble bust. He opens the door and finds another room. It is very similar to the other, and he finds objects in common with the first room. Another marble bust, but this time more melancholic. Also, he finds the same clock, which however shows six o'clock. He opens another door and enters the third room, similar to the previous one. It seems that each room has a unique object. For example, this time he finds a globe. In the process, he finds the same bust, but with a different face, and the clock this time shows nine o'clock. Vince quickly enters the fourth room, much darker than the previous one. Also, the bust is much more disturbing. Vince is about to open another door, but like Becky, he's informed that he doesn't have much time left. Vince quickly moves back while something is driving under the bed covers. Vince tries to exit the portal, but he can no longer find the same room from which he started. He finds himself in a completely new room. He looks around and sees a picture of him and Becky together. Suddenly. A clone of Vince appears at the desk. As if that weren't enough, another clone of Vince arrives from downstairs. The three look at each other, startled and confused. Vince is informed that he has two minutes left to leave the portal. Agitated, he begins to report that he's hallucinating. On the other hand, the clones think that they are the real Vince. The real Vince says that they were born in the portal, and he is the only one wearing a suit. But suddenly, the suit disappears and Vince is wearing ordinary clothes. Soon after, Becky appears behind him, approaching with a gun in her hand. The portal incites her to identify the real Vince. The clone in the raincoat pretends to be the real Vince by lying that he entered the portal with her nine minutes ago. He claims that the other two are clones that appeared in the portal due to their hallucinations. But then, one of the clones points out that he's wearing a raincoat while it's sunny outside. Moreover, Becky realizes it's Vince she met in the kitchen Vince in the raincoat starts to approach her, and Becky shoots him. Two remain, and Becky begins to analyze their clothes. Vince to the left begins to talk to her about the baby, and many things he apologizes for. She reveals some secrets that the real Vince is not yet aware of. The clone reveals that he's not the real Vince. Nevertheless, Becky kills the real Vince and gets trapped in the portal. Next, Martin Midnight updates us on the situation in the world after the portals appeared. The knocker program has turned out to be a failure. The climate is changing drastically, and half the population on Earth has disappeared. About three months later, we meet another character, Jamal. The man lives in the middle of the forest. While preparing coffee, Jamal listens to the radio, which warns people to stay in their homes and call the police if they find a portal. Jamal picks up some tools and heads into the forest to his workstation, where he works on a new project. Jamal found a portal and tried to communicate with it. After four days, he finally manages to get an answer. The portal claims to be his friend. It reveals that the portals have appeared on Earth to study human beings. Amazed, Jamal decides to call his friend Katie to show her his discovery. Katie is a scientist, so he's sure she'll be shocked. The woman brings her boyfriend Leo with her. Jamal reveals to her that he's found a portal, and although hesitant, he lets Leo come with them as well. When she discovers that the portal can communicate, she begins to ask several questions. When she asks the portal's name, the portal says its name is Lamage, which is Jamal in reverse. In the process, Leo makes a phone call and an agent arrives shortly after that. The man orders them away from the portal. He points his gun at Jamal and tries to call the police station. Suddenly, Katie hits him from behind. The officer starts shooting around and accidentally kills Leo. Then. He tries to shoot at Jamal, but the portal somehow neutralizes him. Soon after, Lamage says it's time to update. We then see Martin Midnight taking interviews with a scientist named Alan. The scientist reveals that portals are intellectually superior creatures. They can control everything around them, and we can say that they are like gods. 
Throughout the interview, Alan behaves and speaks oddly. He reveals that the portals have been studying them to prepare them for the upgrade. There is no way to stop them. They can only accept it. At one point, for Martin, it seems that the upgrade has already begun. He walks weirdly around the room, after which he goes up the stairs and undresses. If you want to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on our next videos and playlists on the screen. Thanks for watching!